When it comes to the making and marketing of sunscreens, size may well matter. Tiny ingredients called nanoparticles about the size of atoms and molecules are now part of many lotions. Even though the jury's out on whether they're safe or not, consumers are already making up their own minds and creating a market for sunscreens that are supposedly nano-free. But there are allegations that an Australian company promoting non-nano sunscreen ingredients has been engaged in misleading conduct. Simon Lauder reports. Australians are four times more likely to develop a skin cancer than any other form of cancer. So for decades, the advice has been clear. Slip on a shirt, slop on sunscreen and slap on a hat. No one under the sun questions the wisdom of slopping on sunscreen. But more consumers are now questioning what it is they're rubbing onto their skin, particularly the smallest of ingredients, nanoparticles. We think this is a serious issue because people around the world are concerned about nanoparticles in sunscreens. Australian factories churn out millions of litres of sunscreen each year. A key ingredient is zinc oxide. In some sunscreens, the zinc oxide is so small it's measured in billionths of metres, making it nanoparticle sized. When it's that small, the zinc oxide rubs on clear instead of cloudy, and instead of reflecting UV radiation, it absorbs it. That's where the concerns arise. I don't think there's been enough studies to conclusively say uh, that they're, they're safe in, in all applications uh, to human beings. The concern is that nanoparticles may set off a reaction that alters DNA and damages cells, but that's under debate. In the case of nanosunscreens, which we've done a lot of research on in the last few years, we found that nanosunscreen materials are as equally well tolerated by human skin and immune cells as the bulk sunscreen materials. 1,800 people die of skin cancer each year. We don't have any evidence that nanoparticles in sunscreens have caused any harm at all. Despite the inconclusive science, a market has emerged for so-called nano-free sunscreen. The environment group Friends of the Earth prints a guide for consumers. Last summer, we had over 50,000 downloads of our guide and distributed tens of thousands of copies around Australia, including to most schools in Australia as well. For several years, an Australian company called Antaria has been filling the demand for nano-free sunscreens. Its flagship product is a zinc oxide powder called Zinclear IM, which is now distributed worldwide. Zinclear IM is the main raw ingredient in 10 sunscreens which appear in the Friends of the Earth Safe Sunscreen Guide. But in February, Friends of the Earth was alarmed to discover that testing by the National Measurement Institute had shown some of its recommended sunscreens contain nanomaterials. The guide was shredded. So with all of these different groups, all of these different people uh, looking to our guide to give them a nano-free option, where are they meant to turn? I mean, what are they meant to do now? After that, Friends of the Earth commissioned the National Measurement Institute to take a look at the patent which describes the formula for Zinclear IM. The Institute's conclusion, it is a nanomaterial, as defined by international and Australian industrial standards. It does appear that, that Zinclear IM is uh, an aggregate or a cluster, is made up of clusters of nanoparticles. By marketing that as non-nano to customers and to the share market, it's not right. Antaria's chairman, Rad Dudurovic, has issued a statement denying the allegations from Friends of the Earth. We reject the assertions made in your correspondence which allege we misled the public regarding Zinclear IM. We confirm that the zinc oxide in our Zinclear IM dispersion is of a non-nanoparticle size. Friends of the Earth has now lodged a complaint with the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, alleging Antaria's promotion of Zinclear IM as non-nano amounts to misleading and deceptive conduct. The complaint is endorsed by the Public Health Association, the Australian Education Union and the ACTU. Antaria would not be interviewed, but told 7.30 it's invited Friends of the Earth to come and do its own tests on a sample of the product. We've given them months and months to, to really show some, to, pro to prove that Zinclear IM isn't a nanomaterial. And that's why we're coming out now with, with, this, with these allegations.
Some high-profile labels are among the sunscreen brands affected, including three Cancer Council sunscreens, Invisible Zinc and Woolworths Clear Zinc. Those labels all emphasise that their products are safe to use and the Cancer Council says it does its own testing on its sunscreens. Well, they are nano-free and our testing would, uh, would show that. Uh, they're talking about uh, the raw product that makes them and whether there could be clusters of nanoparticles in those. But if they don't appear in the final product, then that, that's uh, the, what's important to us. But even using sophisticated laboratory techniques, nanomaterials can be difficult to detect. The actual measurements of nanomaterials is quite a, a difficult uh, issue. And in the case of dynamic light scattering, it can be easily confounded by just a few large particles swamping the whole signal. The revelations about Zinclear IM have prompted one company, Mukti Organic Skin Care, to recall its tinted moisturiser with sunscreen. It's now over to the ACCC to judge whether Antaria's marketing claims were misleading or deceptive. But for now, there's nothing to stop Australian manufacturers labelling their products non-nano and there's nothing compelling them to declare nano-ingredients on labels. The Therapeutic Goods Administration believes nanoparticles don't go any deeper than the outermost layer of skin, and there's no need for labelling. New Zealand's regulator says the adverse effects of nanomaterials in sunscreen are uncertain. It's just announced that nano-sunscreens must be labelled by 2015, in line with new European regulations. Simon Lauder reporting.